Before we continue our video review here at 60 Degrees, we would like to give a huge shout out to all of our fellow subscribers. We are just a thousand subs short from giving away our grand prize, the Icon Air Flight Helmet. Once we have hit our mark, a video announcement will be uploaded to our channel revealing our lucky winner. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, we'd like to announce that we have officially opened up our own Patreon page to help support our channel. As you may have come to notice, our video reviews take some time to develop. And with your support, we can manage to create more videos on a weekly basis. For those who are interested in becoming a Patreon Plus supporter, you could win yourself some great prizes. For more information and details, head over to the description tab below of this video. There you'll find our Patreon link and more information on our 5,000 subscriber competition. And now to announce our very first lucky Patreon winner. Congratulations to Justin Taylor. You have just won yourself a free 60 Degrees Acid Wash t-shirt and Key to Freedom key tag. And we would like to thank our fellow 60 Patreons for continuing to support our YouTube channel. It just goes to show how much you truly appreciate the amount of time and work we put into our videos. And we honestly can't thank you enough for showing your support. We will continue to develop more motorcycle related videos for your viewing pleasures. We hope you enjoy our video review. This is one ordinary naked machine. And by ordinary I mean that it has one major identity crisis. It's not quite a naked, but it's classed as one. Not quite a sports motorcycle, but has the technology. Not quite a hypermotard either, but maneuvers like one. Well, we know that its Duke name has struck fear amongst one litre riders before. And the Austrians are hoping to create the same effect once again with this. The KTM 790 Duke. Sticking to its uniquely designed sharp edge looks that could possibly cut through your first homemade brownies and pit bull like characteristics that barks at road hogging push peddlers to get the f out of the way. And with that being said, this KDM 790 Duke should not be taken kindly because it's here to take the middleweight naked bike throne. We do apologise for the wind, it is a bit windy today. Yes, it's ridiculous. Nonetheless, we've had an absolute fall on here. We've racked up probably just over 500 kilometres on this bike. So we had a lot of fun today riding the KTM 790 Duke. Oh yeah. KTM's done it again with the new 790. Although this 799cc parallel twin engine is quite small in appearance, it packs a mean bite like an English Stafford Terrier, producing 105 brake horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 87 newton meters of torque at just 8,000 RPM. It's definitely no slouch when whipping out of those tight corners. Snap that throttle right back and you'll find yourself entering rocket mode. And it's the same deal again, you can't base a motorcycle purely on its specs. You have to ride the bike itself. From the get-go, this thing launches. With the price tag sitting just over 14,000 Aussie dollary dues, you are provided with an outstanding electronics package. These features include on and off ABS, adjustable lean angle detection, traction control, adjustable wheelie control, a motor slip regulator, engine braking control, an up and down blipper, aka quick shifter, full riding modes which include sport, street, rain and track, and of course the KDM's iconic launch control system. All right, so the reason why you're here today is because I'm expendable. You are expendable. <laughs> and if you crash the bike, it's your responsibility to pay it. Oh. So I don't have to worry about it. All right, so we're gonna do a bit of a test launch and see how we go. Mm. 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 This is gonna be interesting. Please be nice, bike. Don't flip me. Now I know what you're thinking. What the bloody hell was that? That was absolutely pathetic. Isn't this bike supposed to have launch control? Well, yes it does. It wasn't until the next day we finally had it figured out. According to KDM's manual, the launch control can only be used for a maximum of three times in succession. After that, the launch control is temporarily deactivated after the third attempt. 
in order to protect the engine, transmission and cooling system from overloading. But it's still a ton of fun once you've got it figured out. It is absolutely amazing. It's an absolute animal off the mark. It honestly feels like a 130 horsepower bike. <laughs> Seriously, it, when you really get into, into that launch mode and you just go full send, this thing's a weapon. Yeah. And you know, you couple that with the quick shifter, it just gets up and boogies. Great throttle response, especially for a fly-by-wire. Not too snatchy, it's not like a light switch on off. Awesome quick shifter, great brakes. Other than that, great all-rounder. Yeah. Would be a weapon in the mountains. And did we mention the KDM's throttle response can be adjusted? And when switching that throttle response to track mode, well. It's a little bit mental. The it definitely has that excitement behind it, yeah, that's that, for sure. Yeah, that throttle response gets a bit more twitchy. Throttle response in track mode, it's very snappy. Very it's sports, it's a little bit more, it's more smooth. Um, yeah, very, not quite as vicious, but very, if you're really wanting to have a play with the track, it's, oh, it can be, I wouldn't say unforgiving, but the front wheel will pop up on you if you're not too careful coming out of those, coming out of those bends. Definitely. Now, if you're wanting to switch back to the more civilized riding modes, you have to physically turn off track mode to adjust back to its original preset settings, i.e. safe mode, or as I like to phrase it, boring modes. Now speaking of brakes, the KDM branded 4-pot radial mounted calibers pulls up incredibly well with its soft initial bite, and with its steel braided brake lines, you can expect consistent braking performance. And to prove our point, we've conducted a brake trigger test to arouse your interest. When traveling at 60 km per hour, the KDM pulls up just short of 10 meters, which is impressive to say considering the average motorcycle stops at 17 meters. So, pulls up better than a Harley, so yeah. that's a plus. 60k an hour, 9.5 meters. Yeah, that's pretty good, considering these aren't Brembo brakes either. Yeah. So, just standard KTMs, they do the job. And when traveling at 100 km per hour, our best recorded distance was measured at 19.5 meters. Stopping power at its best, all thanks to that assisted braking system. It's got a lot of interesting features on here. I noticed the dash changes colours. Yeah, it does, depending yep. on the light. Different um, features like that with your, uh, with your shift light. It lights up the screen and then the whole screen flashes at that's you. That's so handy. That I is know. so handy. You know when to change the gears. Yeah, you just see it and your peripherals going, yeah, click a gear. As opposed to a little LED light that's flickering at you. Yeah. <laughs> or some big monster bloody thing that's going bang. <laughs> Chuck in a lengthy wheelbase with an added mixture of 169 kilograms of dry weight and you have concocted a stable yet flickable mobile machine. No effort is required when manoeuvring the 790 through tight hairpin corners. And although the 43mm upside down front fork suspension is non-adjustable, the initial setup makes the KDM feel plush over our rough Australian roads. The KDM does sit quite tall and gives off that exact narrow motard feeling when placing your legs around the motorcycle. Now you will find yourself sitting on top of the bike rather than in it, which can create that strange sense of pendulum effect when entering and exiting those corners. Give it time and you'll find yourself adapted to the motorcycle's rhythmic pattern. I don't think it really needs it. Maybe if you're a heavier set from bloke, you'd probably notice yeah. the suspension would be a bit. Well, that's that's where you do have that um, preload adjustment in the back. Mm. It would help you out a little bit, but yeah. other than that, there's really not any more adjustment. It's still quite a nice suspension system, though. I was really sort of disappointed when I when I found out that it was not adjustable because you know, I'm a tinkerer. Well, it's Real. got plenty of travel there. Oh, heaps. Travel. I mean, if you're comparing it to the Brutality 800, that's the suspension setup on them is just absolutely shocking. No. It doesn't matter how much you adjust it, they're just way too stiff, yeah. next to no travel. And when you go over a bump, it feels like your tailbone's about to shoot out of your bloody mouth. This, no issues whatsoever. Truly, this is a very impressive piece of lightweight machinery in performance. Looks, on the other hand, I mean, it's a good looking bike. On the front? On the front, yeah. On the front of it, the front looks sexy as, but it's that rear that just... You just walk around here and then it's like... What are those? <laughs> what is... What is that? I don't even know. It, it looks like a catfish. I don't know. It's like if you ever see this thing in person, you gotta just cover that rear end and go, yeah, that's a sexy bike. Yeah. But then as soon as it pulls out from that corner and you see that rear end, you go, oh. Yeah, ooh. Ugh. Ooh. 
And uh, the tail light, I'm sorry, but I don't like this design. No, that's no. just, that's weird. I'm sure there's aftermarket replacements, but that'd probably be the very first thing I'd change. I would change that. If there was any aftermarket options, that'd be the first thing to go with the exhaust. I mean, it sounds good for a stock standard exhaust. But it's the same thing again, just like when we did the test rod review on the MT-10, that's not a pretty bike. But once you start riding it, you forget about the looks and you're enjoying the moment. At the end of the day, when you buy a new bike, the first thing that you do is buy an aftermarket exhaust. Yeah. Everyone does it. Yep. So if you're complaining about the exhaust being so ugly and it's so bulky, look, it's got to meet the Euro emissions. That's the reason why a lot of modern day bikes come out with these bulky tin cans. The um, headlight is sensitive as well, I noticed. Um, yep. Pulling in through, or well, going under tunnels, the headlight switches on and then turns back off. Oh, awesome. Now these are not the standard mirrors, these are aftermarket, they're aftermarket KTM bar end mirrors. The levers are fully adjustable. You can take this bike onto a track, but personally I think you'd be wasting your time unless it's quite a tight track. Yeah. High speed cornering, no. Nah, this thing's not designed for it, it really isn't. It, it, like we said, this is more of a hyper motard sort of setup yeah. than anything else. Yeah. How was it getting up to the highest speeds? Were you getting a bit of head shake? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Noticeable? Did not even like notice a steering dampener on it, which it does have. Yeah. But, yeah. Plenty, all those runs, head shake. As soon as you hit that 150 plus mark, I reckon 160, 170 onward. Sketchy as. <laughs> Sketchy. So, in other words, get an aftermarket steering head dampener because that ain't doing shit. <laughs> yeah, if, if there's that option, just do it. Just do yourself a favor, I reckon. Yeah. It's quite a long wheelbase yeah. on it. You know, it's, I just find it amusing how. You know, other review channels say, oh, it's it's sports bike orientated. No. Nah. No. Nah. Nah, if you were to go out to a track with long straights, man, you'd be struggling. Yeah. Give yourself a tight track or a tight mountain, you clean up all day. Yeah, definitely. Now, being a tall person yourself, you're what, six foot? Six four. Six four. You feel cramped in any way? Not cramped. Get a fair bit of wind on the highway. Yeah. On the way down here, but, you know, that's any sort of naked bike. Yeah. Something without that shield has to be expected, mm. but not so much that you try, like feels like you're getting blown off the bike. I'm always on my tippy toes pulling up at a set of lights. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes I've got to find out, I've just got to hang off to one side with one leg on the ground. Um, for you, your feet were just planted. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. It feels like I'm getting back on my old dirt bike when I throw a leg over this thing. Yeah, that's what it feels like. You know, feel like you're going out for a track day in the dirt. Mm. It just it puts you in that, that upright seating position, the elbows are up. You just want to throw this thing around. This would be my pick of the lid if I was to choose from a 09 or a, or a Street Triple or the Z900. This is the one I'd go for. for. The amount of technology that it provides for its price yeah. is you can't go past it. Uh, speaking of kilometres, this bike can be quite thirsty. Yes, it can if, you, if you're into it. Yeah, it, it drinks the fuel. Yeah, I think you'd be lucky to hit the 200 mark to a tank, to be honest. Yeah. But I know uh, chilling on, on the highway around about 100 kilometres, you're only revving just under 4,000 RPM, which yeah. is good. It's it's not working hard. So it's quite tall geared, yeah. fifth and sixth gear. And from what I noticed, litres per 100, it was regist uh, registering between 3 to 2.8 litres per 100. So that's not too bad. That's yes. pretty good. Statistically, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, that's good fuel for something. I'm very impressed with this bike. And another thing I've picked up as well, the coolant's really easy to get to. Yes. Um, one thing I would recommend is a radiator guard. Yes. I definitely get that because that's quite exposed. One to ten rating, ten being highest, one being lowest. What, what do you think you give this bike? Oh, out of its category, I'd out say... Its category. Nine out of ten. 9 out of 10? Yeah. yeah. I really, I'm sorry, I really enjoyed this bike. I did too. So it is so cool. I'd be sitting at about, yeah, 8.5 yeah. probably. Yeah. Out of 10. You know, there was a lot of hype when this bike first came out, but now I understand why. Yeah. It is a very impressive machine. It is. I'm very impressed. Thus concludes our video review. Here at 60 Degrees, we would like to thank Team Moto at Virginia for allowing us this wonderful opportunity to test ride the all-new 790 Duke. 
We would also like to thank our fellow subscribers and 60 Degree Patreons for watching our latest motorcycle test ride review. We have plenty of motorcycle related content for you all to enjoy and more prizes to give away to our fellow Patreons and subscribers. And as always my fellow riders, get on your two wheels and free the soul. Thanks for watching.